Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. Now in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Teixcalan duology and letting you know what type of sci-fi it is and what type of readers I think it might appeal to. So starting with the premise, we follow in a memory called Empire, the Ambassador Mahit from an independent station LaSalle to the intergalactic empire of Teixcalan. And once there, she has to discuss, negotiate, and maintain their relationship with the Empire, while also trying to investigate what really happened to the previous ambassador. So the first thing this series offers is a mystery. I think if you enjoy spy stories or political intrigue, there'll be a lot for you to enjoy in an environment where every character seems suspicious and you can't trust anyone. In some ways, this story feels a little bit similar to a Tinker Tailor soldier spy if it was set in space. Although that's not the only thing that Mahit has to deal with. Next up, we have power struggles. Now, a conversation is never just a conversation in Texcalan. Every word you say is judged and stripped for different layers of meaning. And relationships feel transactional as the lines between friends, enemies, even lovers seem pretty blurry and they're constantly shifting. In some ways, Tex Client reminds me of the TV show Succession, and the, the tone is very different, but it's a story that rather than focusing on a large breadth of factions that are fighting for power, it focuses on a small group of people that are constantly digging and scheming against one another. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the culture. Now, Tex Client feels like a very unique empire to me, in part due to its love for language. Poetry is used as a means of communication and even encryption, and the naming system of a number and a noun, such as three seagrass or six direction, I like to refer to myself as seven iron, reveals a lot about you as a person and says about something about your place in society. It goes about it in a different way, but just as the richness of the culture in Dune stems very much so from the environment of Arrakis, the importance of language influences nearly every single aspect of Teixcalan, and I found that to be really interesting and rewarding. Now this is a fish out of water story. A large part of Mahit's journey as a character is dealing with the feeling of being an outsider. Not only does she have to learn on the fly the intricacies of this new environment, she also falls in love with its culture, yet questions whether she will ever be fully accepted by it. I think this exploration and interplay of different cultures is perhaps another aspect that could have been inspired or influenced by Dune, and I think it's something that works both conceptually as well as hitting on a personal level. In terms of scope, I think the focus of the story in A Memory Called Empire is very narrow. The characters do make decisions that have large implications, but the plot follows the small cast of characters featured in this book. Now, the scope does expand a little bit in A Desolation Called Peace, as we do get some new POVs and we get to explore more of the universe than just the main city of Teixcalan, and it also introduces some new concepts. So. It could be something that some people might prefer about the sequel. So the next few items I wanted to talk about are stylistic choices that I wouldn't necessarily categorize as pros or cons, but might be some aspects that I think will appeal to some readers more than others. So the first of those is the use of technology. I wouldn't categorize this as a hard sci-fi series, although it definitely is sci-fi and includes some interesting aspects such as surveillance and one technology known as the Imago, which can influence a person's memory and personality. I found that one in particular to be a highlight of the series, something that I was very intrigued by. Now, especially in A Memory Called Empire, though, the series does focus more on characters than technology, although I will say A Desolation Called Peace does introduce a few more sci-fi tropes, a few more technologies and concepts, uh, such as jump gates, uh, which you might enjoy learning more about. So if that was something that was lacking for you in the first book, then that might appeal to you about the second. Next, we have the pacing. I would say that the series in general, on a macro level, moves at a slow to medium pace. It's not a fast-paced adventure as the story takes place over actually quite a small period of time, and rather than exploring a lot at a fast pace, 
it really digs into specifics in great detail. Now, on a page-to-page -page basis, I would say that it's also somewhat of a slow read. In general, I would estimate that I read about a page a minute or 60 pages for app per hour, but for TextKaline, I would say that number was probably closer to 45. Now, in part, that is due to, in the beginning, you're getting used to uh, some terminology, some long words, the naming system, uh, but I felt like I was able to adapt to that fairly quickly and did get used to it. Uh, but even after that, the writing style is a little bit dense, and I think for some people, the prose might bog down the story a little bit, but I think for others and people like me, I think you will find the prose to be incredibly rich. I should also mention that the series is dialogue heavy. I think that might be part of the reason that the plot doesn't move overly quickly, because there's definitely more dialogue than action. In some ways, stylistically, this reminds me of classic sci-fi, such as Foundation, in the way that it focuses on ideas and dialogue. However, it also feels a lot more modern, especially when it comes to the characters and the themes. Now, personally, I enjoyed the dialogue. I thought it was very clever and very witty at times, but I have seen some people say that they found it to be a bit boring and they even hated some of these characters. So. Obviously that's subjective, but I think you'll be able to tell fairly quickly, probably within the first 200 pages or so, uh, whether this style, whether this, these characters and this dialogue is going to work for you. So next I wanted to talk about how I think Takes Kalan works as a duology. Well, I think that the first book, A Memory Called Empire, does come to a natural breaking point and does reach the conclusion of a particular story arc, while also doing a good job of setting up the second book. I think if you enjoy the first, then there's a pretty good chance that you're going to enjoy the second as well. I think if you hate the first book, then the second book isn't different enough for it to really have a good chance of changing your mind on the series. I think if you liked the first book, but felt like it was perhaps a little bit too narrow in scope, then I think with the second, you might enjoy the new characters, the new concepts, and the new locations that we get in A Desolation Called Peace. So what is my verdict on the series? Well. Overall, I really enjoyed both books. If you saw my review for A Memory Called Empire, you'll know that I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. And when it comes to the sequel, A Desolation Called Peace, I would say that I enjoyed the majority of the book slightly less than the first one because I was a little bit more intrigued by the mystery and I enjoyed the character dynamics a little bit more in the first book. However, I enjoyed the ending slightly more in A Desolation Called Peace. I have read some other books with some similar messages, so it didn't completely blow me away, but the ending to A Desolation Called Peace I really connected with on a personal level, and for that I really appreciate the series. For a score, I'm going to have to say, for me, A Desolation Called Peace was an 8 out of 10. So two great scores a similar, of similar quality, and I really enjoyed them together as a duology. So lastly, who do I recommend this to? Well, I think if you're looking for a fast-paced adventure that focuses on action or science, this might not be the best series for you. But if you sound intrigued by thoughtful sci-fi that focuses on culture, characters, and language, then this could be something unique that might just click for you. So those are my thoughts on the Takes Kalan series. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can find more sci-fi content over here.